In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. May the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, and forevermore. Amen. The Gospel of today is according to St. Mark, and chapter 7, verses 1 to 23, inclusive. It is Mark 7, 1 to 23, where the Lord Jesus was approached by some scribes and Pharisees, and they were not pleased seeing some of his disciples eating with unwashed hands. Unwashed hands. They were eating with unwashed hands and they were not pleased with that. So they came to the Lord and they said, why are your disciples breaking the rules and the law? And then the Lord Jesus rebuked them and unfortunately, until today, our beloved Jews, they have to wash and clean and cleanse the dishes that have been purchased from the marketplace, from the shops, before they eat in them. They need to purify them. But not realizing where the Lord Jesus here is saying, it is not about the plate, it is not about the spoon, it is not about the cup, because you need to dive deep down and realize that I came for you. And this is where the Lord Jesus explained it to his disciples when they asked him afterwards, they said, what does that mean? that if we eat with what you said, what comes from outside the man does not defile a man, but what comes from inside of the man is what defiles him. So they did not understand it being Jews themselves and uh, knowing the rules and the laws all their lives. They didn't understand what the Lord Jesus was really saying, what comes from outside does not defile a man, but it is what comes out of that man is what defiles him. So the Lord Jesus said, you don't understand either. What comes from outside into in, inside of that man does not go into his heart, it goes into his stomach. And then it gets eliminated naturally but it is out of the man's heart that comes everything that is evil. Evil thoughts, pride, lustful things, so many things. It is outside of the, from the heart of man comes all evil. It's not what you eat that defiles you, it's what comes out of you that defiles you. Because Moses, when he said to the Israelite nation, wash the dishes, the plates, the cups, and the spoons, he was not referring in the literal sense to washing the plate, the spoon, and the cup. He was referring to the spiritual sense, which is the Word of God, which is the law of God. The law of God is spiritual more than it is physical. the river a little bit down. It is more spiritual than rather literal. They washed the plate. They washed the spoon. They washed the cup, not realizing that plate is your heart and that spoon is your deed and that cup is your body. So Moses was saying, by the will of God, the, who gave Moses the law? God Himself. 
So would God waste his time and Moses' time to, to speak about dishes and plates and spoons? Of course not. He was saying the spoon is your deeds. You eat with it. That's your deeds. The plate is your heart. He said cleanse your heart. Ple cleanse your deeds. Cleanse your bodies. Then you are vessels of glory for me. I cannot dwell in you when your body, your heart and your deeds are of evil origin. I'm not talking about going and cleaning and cleansing the dishes yet inside of you is full of evil things so what is the point of your hands being clean but your heart not what is the point of the outer appearance being so beautiful but the inside is so ugly what's the point What's the point? The Lord is saying we need to focus more on the inner person rather than the outer person. I can stand and make my face look the most beautiful of faces in the entire world means nothing if my heart is not I can beautify myself outwardly but as long as the inner person is not seen beautiful in the eyes of God then I've achieved nothing because whatever is external is temporal but whatever is internal is permanently eternal Whatever is external is temporal, but whatever is internal is eternal. The problem of humanity, and more so the Christian world, more so the Christian world, we strive very heavily we try very hard to pleasing people around us to satisfying my own intuitions but never looking at what God is really expecting of me I focus too much on how people perceive me but not on God I need to do this for people to like me I need to achieve this for me to be seen someone very high and very big in the eyes of the world I need to be with this person and that person in order to get somewhere but where is God in the midst of all of this where is he is the church here to please the world is the church here to please herself as the church or is the church here to glorify her king Jesus Christ of Nazareth where is the church in relation to Christ where is the church does the church wants to be seen beautiful in the eyes of the world well guess what the eyes of the world is evil satanic so who are we pleasing here Satan or the Lord Jesus but you see there is one thing we need to always be mindful of every time we please the Lord we make Satan go haywire every time we please the Lord there is probably a persecution coming our way it is not easy to keep the inside of us clean it's very easy to keep the outside clean but anything and everything that is outside, external, is only temporal. I've spent so much money on myself, on my body. At the end, termites will eat the body. And how many thousands upon thousands have you spent on your body? Guess what? 
when that body goes into that pit termites will never say oh this body is expensive they spend a million dollars with plastic surgeries on it I can't touch this one but this other guy now he didn't even make one little tiny change to that body I'm gonna eat this one no no actually they'll eat the plastic one more than the other one there are bodies of saints still incorrupt till this day and they have moved on decades upon decades and maybe centuries ago but the body hasn't corrupted yet wow because they searched inside of them to see how God would see the inside of man I just read you this. Look at this. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. For from within, this is the Lord Jesus speaking. For from within, out of the heart of men. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, 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 wickedness, deceit, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. The first one, evil thoughts. out of the heart of men comes number one evil thoughts the last one is foolishness the first one is evil thoughts the last one is foolishness if we sit for a moment we think for ourselves it's amazing the first thing we think of is always negative never positive isn't it any one of us here we look back in, in in history we go back in time and we look at our past we will always focus on all the negative things that we've done or that have happened in our life in the past never a positive thing will come first always a negative thing when we come to make a judgment of someone it is always a negative one before the, the positive one why a negative thought comes out of the heart of man and the heart here is not the one that pumps the blood no your inner person the heart of man is your being, your soul, your entire being from within. And by the way, when we close our eyes, when we close our eyes for whatever time it is, what do we see? We see void, don't we? We see void when we close our eyes but that void there is no boundary there is no limit to it it's like an empty space with no limits no boundaries this is a message from the almighty God saying to all of us when you close your eyes you see an endless space endless space no limits to it why because God is saying to all of us that endless space it takes God alone to fill that endless space 
since he is the only infinite endless God it takes the infinite God to fill this infinite space once we close our eyes he put this void inside only you see it when you close your eyes not when you open your eyes when you open your eyes you see the limited tangible world that we live in the moment we open our eyes I see the beginning and the end to things I see the beginning of the road and the end of it once I travel I see this person's head to toe once I open my eyes but the moment I shut my eyes to this tangible limited realm I enter the invisible limitless realm and where is this limitless realm inside of me not outside of me and the Lord said it he said the kingdom of God you don't wait for it it is here or over there the kingdom of God is inside of you what God was saying the Lord Jesus was saying here it is not what enters a man that defiles him but it is what comes out of the man that defiles him you see you need to look at the inside of you not the outside of you because the outside of you is temporal is nothing but a dream at the awakening it's a dream at the awakening and what is a dream at the awakening the moment I wake up from that dream which I thought this was it and there was nothing else while I was dreaming but I I did not realize it was a dream for me it was reality and this is it I'm living it and no one can take it away from me a tap on my shoulder from mom waking me up it was taken away from me in a blink of an eye the moment I opened my eyes though all it was just one dream gone with the wind the moment the spirit leaves the body all this reality is nothing but a dream at the awakening so people plan people do people go and spend hours upon hours endless sleepless nights to do all these plots to destroy to conquer to kill to do my goodness the moment their spirit leaves the body gone it was just a dream they think they will live forever but it's just a dream evil thoughts come out of men who are godless who have no God what is the first thing comes out of a human being that has no God an evil thought why it is an evil thought because the one who is conquering the one who is ruling the one who is controlling that human being is Satan and what is Satan evil let me tell you this human beings are sinners not evil human beings at the human level they are sinners who is evil Satan when does a human being become an evil doer when he or she they allow Satan to rule conquer and control their life totally and entirely when Satan controls that human being from head to toe that human being ends up being an evil doer not evil an evil doer because God never ever intended for any human being to end up being evil evil is only a title given to Satan what are we sinners when we make mistakes we're not evil we are sinners there is forgiveness for sinners but there is no forgiveness for evil Satan cannot be forgiven because he is the evil one but when humans allow Satan to control them completely they become evil doers 
which we see in our time and age so so strongly trying very hard to do nothing but evil one of it is child trafficking just think with me for a moment for a human being to go and kill another human being destroy another life and after killing that human being they sit and laugh and enjoy the moment as if they have achieved something so awesome now for this human to reach this level they are so blind beyond recognition they are so destroyed beyond any limits because it takes Satan's full control for this human being to be an evil doer. To be an evil doer. It takes Satan, my beloved. The moment we walk away from the Lord Jesus, the moment we detach ourselves from the Lord Jesus, we become darkness. We enter darkness, we imitate darkness. Because the Lord Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Now the light, when the light shines, everything is clear. Everything comes into clarity. When we are in total darkness, we will not recognize our right hand from our left hand. Evil thoughts is the beginning to the end of the road being a fool, foolishness. So what does the evil thought lead that person to? Foolishness. What does the pure thought lead the person to? Wisdom. Wisdom. Satan is wise. However, in evilness, he is wise. To do nothing but evil. So what does, say, what does that make Satan? A fool. A, a, a being, whether it's spiritual, whether it is physical, any being, whether spiritual or physical, the moment they do everything in darkness, they are nothing but foolish beings. Absolute foolish. So all this evil in the world, who is behind it? Satan. Why people ended up doing evil deeds? Because they allowed Satan to infiltrate their life and conquer completely their life. In other words, they worship Satan. They worship Satan. I just cannot fathom even though I know what is going on in the world but it's so sad so sad that it's happening look at the people of the world how foolish they are in doing all this evil the question is for what just to get some sort of a pleasure out of it some sort of an enjoyment out of it, some sort of a fulfillment that is sick in the head out of it. What are you doing? 
Do you see all the evil thoughts that is coming out of the people of the world? Trying to infiltrate this little innocent child and try to change this child from the way God has created this child. How much more evil can it be than this? And for them it's just a game. For them it's just fun because they don't know what else to do. They are bored. They are too bored. They don't know. They've tried everything under the sun. Another thing, when a person becomes worldly only, they will never, ever, never, ever be content. They will never, ever be content. Because the world, once you chase it, there is never contentment. You may say, once I have a million dollars in the account, I'll be content and happy. You'll have it, but it's not enough because you'll still compare and look at others having 10 million in their account. Then you want to have 10 and 20 and it will be a never ending story until that person ends up in that pit called the grave and taking absolutely nothing with them. Absolutely nothing with them. Satan infiltrates and puts that evil thought in the heart of men that are distant from God. That are distant from God. Because in this world, there is two powers that wish to control humanity. One is light and one is darkness. It is either the light Christ, our Lord and Savior, or it is darkness, Satan, the foolish one. It is up to us to choose either the light or darkness. We can't have both worlds at the same time. It is either the light or darkness and the choice is ours. We decide to choose which path to walk in and which side to be in. When we choose darkness, Satan is in control. Some people who are deceived by Satan think that when they do it their way, they are free. They think they are doing it. No, the moment you say no to the Lord Jesus, Satan is in control of your entire life. No one, no human beings, please pay attention. No human beings was ever created to be free on their own. Never existed, never will. God created this human being for God to control his life or her life. This was the intention of God from the very, very beginning. God created us so that he can be in charge of our lives and God is love. But if we choose not to be controlled by God, thinking that I can do whatever I want, I'm free. The moment you walk away from the Lord, Satan is in control. He will deceive you in saying, look at you, you're free. Satan at the beginning, he will never ever reveal himself to that person. Never, never ever. Because Satan, the last thing he wants to do is to reveal himself to humanity fully. Who does he reveal himself to? To those who have gone the distance and done every evil thing under the sun and are totally cut off from the Lord Jesus and they worship Satan to those he reveals himself and gives them certain ideas and thoughts which ends up with being a fool. No one is free. It is either God, the Lord Jesus, controlling you or Satan. I can never live for myself, by myself, freely. There is no such thing. It is either the light controlling you or darkness. 
clean your heart to see the light. If we don't clean our hearts, darkness will infiltrate and conquer. Evil thoughts end up being put into action. And this is what we see, evil thoughts. So let's now introduce another evil thought where we manipulate the human gender. So we take this evil thought and we plant it into the people's minds. And let's start with the little kids. So if this little innocent baby, child, they said to that child, if you feel only just a feel, when a feeling hits you, it's enough for you to decide what you want to be. Just a feeling. Wow. So you wake up as a man and you feel you're not a man. Then you have the right to be something else. You wake up as a woman and you feel you're no longer a woman. You can be whatever you want to be because this is what, how you feel. You are right. You have the right now to go and chase and pursue your feelings. Why don't we apply this feeling to everything else in that human life? How about you are a 20 year old girl. You wake up and you feel you are 120. Then you're 120. I'm going to have to bury you because you're dead. Can that be? Why is the feel only about the gender, not anything else? I feel I'm black, even if I'm white. And I feel I'm white, even if I'm black. I feel I'm tall, even if I'm short. I feel I'm skinny, even if I'm fat. And with all love and respect. But I'm just saying, because this is, do you see? The language of the evil thought is foolishness. Because that's where you end up with an evil thought, being a fool. You speak foolishness. You act like a fool. And this is the world. The Lord Jesus is saying, out of the heart of men comes all evil thoughts and everything with it. Every evil thought. It takes evilness to lead to foolishness and it takes humility to lead to wisdom. It takes evilness to lead to foolishness but it takes humility to lead to wisdom. The opposite. And the beginning, the beginning to the road to humility is, is the day when you and I, I and you, we begin to see our hearts the way God sees it, not anyone else. The beginning of the road to humility is the day when all of us begin to see our hearts the way God sees it. I question myself, all of us, we need to question ourselves. If God looks at my heart this very moment, how will God see my heart? If you figure this one out, then you are in the right path to becoming a humble person before your Lord. And the question is, if God looks at all of us hearts, how will He see it? A lot of errors, a lot of darkness, spider webs everywhere. There is envy, there is jealousy, there is pride, there is bigotry, there is adultery, there is lust, lustfulness, there is evilness, there is everything that is bad and evil. 
This is why my advice to every Christian and every human being, don't ever say, I have a good heart. You're lying. If any human being, more so Christians, who believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, any Christian that declares this statement, I have a good heart, you're saying literally to Jesus Christ, you are lying, Jesus. I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> this in its own is the grievous sin you could ever do. When the Lord says out of the man's heart comes all evil thoughts, well, God is always right and let every human being be a liar. For God never lies. For God not only speaks the truth, for He is the truth. He is the truth. So, when I say to the Lord, I have a good heart, I've lied. Pride will engulf me. Evil thoughts will infiltrate me and I will end up being a fool before the source of wisdom who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy and mighty name. So what do I need to do to avoid these evil thoughts? To avoid Satan controlling my life, I need to come and say to the Lord Jesus, I am the greatest sinners ever to exist. I am the greatest sinners ever to exist. Lord, I'm coming to you with a heart full of darkness, with a heart full of evil thoughts, with a heart full of pride, false glory, with a heart that has broken your heart, with a heart that has sold you with 30 pieces of silver, a heart that has exchanged you with the filth of the world. I gave up on the Lord for a lustful moment in the streets of the city. I gave up on the Lord for a small bag of white powder. I gave up on the Lord for this and that and everything else in this filthy stinking world. I gave up on the Lord. Today I'm coming saying, Lord, have mercy on me, I the sinner. Have mercy on me, for I have sinned before you and heaven. Not worthy to be called your son anymore. I'm not worthy. Make me one of those Work is in your citadel. I've sinned, Lord. When you come, confess your sin. Confess that you are a sinner. You have broken the law of God. You have broken the heart of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we confess our sins, this is the beginning of the road to humility. And blessed are you when you make yourself humble before your Lord, for He will exalt you in the end. He will elevate you in the end. It, is, it takes humility to overcome Satan. Nothing else. You want to overcome Satan? Be humble. This is the beginning of your journey with the Lord. When anyone comes and says, Lord, I want to be with you. Maybe you were baptized when you were a baby and you've grown up and you veered off the road as a Christian. You veered off the road and you went away astray in this world for, for years. And after all these many years, you're coming back you want to re-establish, you want to renew this relationship with the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus will remind you the very first thing I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will ask of anyone who comes to me and says, Lord, you are my King, you're my Savior, you're my everything. The Lord will say, you need to be humble. That's the beginning of the road. And what is humility? Death. What is death, biblically speaking? Self-denial. Self-denial. What is that? The Holy Cross. The Lord will give you His cross. This is the beginning of the journey. 
Cross is death. Death is self-denial. I no longer live for myself. I no longer live for what I wish to do and wish to have. It is what the Lord wishes for me to have and do, not I. This is the beginning of the journey with the Lord Jesus. It is death ends up in life. The world gives you at the beginning life, but at the end, eternal death. You chase the world, you live to die. You chase the Lord, you die to live. Where did this evil thought come from? Pride. Pride, my beloveds. Pride is to do with the spirit. Lust is to do with the flesh. Greed is to do with the soul. When someone asks you for money and you take the smallest note out of your pocket, don't be greedy. Break your soul, S-O-U-L. Smack your soul and say, I'm giving the hundred dollar note, not the five. Sometimes when they take their plate around, you know, during the mass, <laughs> oh, thank God we don't do that here. Because I don't want the Holy Mass to be interrupted by a plate going around. You've got a box outside, it's up to you. You want to put, you don't want to put, it's between you and the Lord, nothing to do with me. But anyway, when they take the plate around, um, they hey, look, they see somebody putting a hundred dollar note, they say, oh, that's very generous. And then becomes like a, an exchange place. 50, 20, 25. What attacks the spirit is pride. And this is why this angel, who was the highest level in the angelic orders, Lucifer, <laughs> huh? what, what made him fall from the highest place to the lowest place, from the most beautiful to the ugliest of all, was pride. See, because he is spirit and spirit only. So what attacks the spirit is pride. And what the medication for this pride is humility. And with pride comes evil thoughts. So what made Satan having filled with evil thoughts was the pride which attacked him in the very beginning. And he wants to put that in every human being's heart. Because he knows the moment he makes a human boastful, he's got him. He knows because he's tasted what failure was. He's tasted what a fall is. He knew exactly how to make a human fall. I'll put that pride in them and that will kill them naturally. So how I can overcome this pride with that, which attacks the spirit? Humility. And what is the way to humility? Prayer. Prayer, my beloved. Prayer. You need to pray. Prayer brings your spirit down to earth. Prayer, my beloved, brings the spirit down to earth. Have you prayed lately? Is your prayer life running on an empty tank? Do you need to refill the tank again? When do you pray? How do you pray? The more you pray, the more your spirit is humble, the more you are close to the Lord Jesus. And the closer you are to the Lord Jesus, what is the Lord going to give you? A pure thought. A holy one. Next time you look at the people who have hurt you, you'll bless them. You look at the people who have stabbed you in the back, you will pray for them. You look at the people who have gone against you and you will embrace them. You will never be angry. You will never retaliate. 
you will never take revenge. You will say, Lord, just like the way you touched my heart and woken me up, I beg you, Lord, touch their hearts and wake them up because it takes God to, em to fill that empty void inside of you. Remember, when you're distant from the Lord, you close your eyes, you see nothing but emptiness. When the Lord brings you closer and closer to Him through His grace, the next time you close your eyes, you won't see emptiness, you'll see heaven. You'll see heaven. Close your eyes and contemplate on the Lord. You'll see Him stretching His arm toward you and saying to you, do not worry, I am with you. I've given you my wounds to heal you. I've given you my cross to elevate you. Because in my cross there is humility and with humility exaltation. And in my wounds there is purification, there is healing. close to the Lord Jesus be close to the Lord Jesus the world is a tip it's nothing but filth not rubbish rubbish can be recycled filth cannot this is not my word this is St. Paul's this is St. Paul's this is the word of the Lord given to St. Paul St. Paul says I see the world as a tip, not a rubbish place. No, rubbish can be recycled. You can get something good out of rubbish. But out of filth, filth is good for nothing. Just burn it. That's all you do with filth. You just burn it. So he said, I see the world as one big filth in order to gain Christ. In order to gain Christ, I looked at the whole world with all its pleasures, with all its treasures, and I saw it nothing but one big tip full of filth awaiting the fire in the end God will cleanse this world with fire this time my beloveds with fire we need to come back to the Lord Jesus stop chasing the world stop just focusing on your flesh stop just stop focusing on materialistic things stop saying I want a mansion what is the point of living in a mansion and living miserably? I live in a little shed, but as long as the Lord is the head of this shed, I will live like a king and a queen. Get the Lord to be your home. Get, let the Lord to be your life, your everything, my beloveds. Stop chasing materialistic things because in materialism there is foolishness at the end. What are we going to take with us in the end when the spirit leaves the body? Absolutely nothing. That casket only fits me. Cannot fit the house. Cannot fit the car. Cannot fit money. Cannot fit nothing. It fits me and my deeds only. And the casket has no openings, no pockets, no windows. Fully sealed. Even if they want to put some gold with it, gone. No room. No space. No opening. I need to make this heart a heart where Christ dwells, where pure thoughts come out. Wow. Big deal, my hands are dirty. What a foolish statement by some fools called Pharisees and scribes. Fools. Oh, they ate. With, with, uh, they didn't wash their hands. Get a life. So you go and care about your hands being clean and your mind and your heart not clean. You judge people. You stab people. You speak badly about people. All this is okay. Gossiping about people. Trying to destroy their image. 
trying to destroy people by saying nasty things about them this is okay but as long as my hands are clean when I eat my goodness you cannot be a greater fool than this let my hands be dirty as long as the heart is clean my hands are not gonna make me dirty it is the heart that makes a human being dirty my beloved when you think evil thoughts when you think of doing evil to others you've lost God you've lost him love covers a lot of errors I'll leave you with this taking too much of your time I'm always happy to do that <laughs> Saint Macarius was a spiritual father to some monks in the third century third century 1700 years ago he's still alive with us he's still alive with us do you want me to describe him for you the real saint macarius the real one who lived 1700 years ago he's with us in the 21st century how he looked exactly on earth 1700 years ago very old man I can't talk much might upset him but let me tell you one thing Saint Macarius this mighty saint one day see he read this verse in the Holy Bible in the epistle of Saint Paul first Corinthians chapter 13 love covers a lot of errors wow so one day Saint Macarius he felt like going to pray with another monk in his cell he was the head of that monastic life so he walks he goes to that cell opens the door to pray with the monk and he sees that monk with a woman in the cell together in the monastery in that cell that monk was with a woman Saint Macarius filled with the Lord Jesus his heart given to the Lord he realized he realized other monks must have seen him while he was going to that cell he said they're gonna follow me because to them he is their spiritual father to them he is their saint on earth so they said he said they're gonna follow me to receive the blessings straight away in that cell there was a big box he grabbed the monk put him in the box he grabbed the woman put her in the box closes that box he puts a little carpet on top of that box he gets up and sits on that box pretending that he is in a very deep contemplative prayer with his head down and his eyes closed other monks did follow him they came and opened the door thinking he's praying with that other monk they see him by himself in that cell with his head down eyes closed and they said to each other shh let us not make noise he is in deep contemplation with the Lord Jesus he is our saint leave him alone so they all went back to their cells and as they all went back to their cells Saint Macarius gets up he never said one word neither to the monk nor to that woman he did not give not even one dot nothing he gets up and walks out of the cell and as he going quietly to his cell he heard the voice of his master of his Lord Jesus from heaven in real he heard his voice saying Makarios Makarios blessed are you for you have hidden the mistake of your brother I will hide your mistakes on judgment day I will hide them he saved the life of that monk and the woman blessed are you when you have pure thoughts towards others not evil thoughts so that you may be seen wise in the eyes of your Lord don't ever end up being a fool in the eyes of your Lord because you will go to hell 
Because in the kingdom of God, there is definitely no fools. They're all wise, like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy name. Next time you want to speak about someone, think a million times before you say anything. Because you're not doing anyone a favor, but you first and then others. Do you want the Lord to say, this is my child? Do you want the Lord to say nice things about you in the end? Do you want the Lord to be proud of you? Imitate him on earth. Imitate him. Do you think the Lord cannot put all of us to shame before we blink our eyes? He can. He can reveal all of our mistakes, all of our sins, because everything is recorded. Everything is, in, is, is before His holy eyes. But why is He not exposing us and putting us to shame? Because love covers a lot of errors. He loves us. Because love gives, brings, pure thoughts, not evil. Love, when you walk in that love, you'll end up being wise. Purify your thoughts. Think good of others to win the Lord Jesus. Don't worry. People have hurt you. It is the Lord who takes that revenge, not you. It is the Lord who pays and rewards, not you. It is the Lord. Leave everything in His capable hands and say, Lord, cleanse my heart, purify my heart. I don't want no evil thoughts coming out of me. All I want is nothing but love and pure thoughts going towards everyone around me. Forgive, for you shall be forgiven. Have mercy on others, for you shall receive mercy. Blessed are those who are pure in the heart, for they shall be called, for they shall see God, for they shall see God. And blessed are those, are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Wow. But those who are pure in the heart, what? They will see God. What is seeing God means? God will tell you how He operates. When He walks, you will know it's Him. When He talks, you will know it's His voice. You will recognize His voice in the midst of million other voices. And definitely you will differentiate His voice from that deceptive snake called Satan. He can come and deceive you. But when you are pure in the heart, the Lord will make sure when you hear His voice, you will know for certainty it is the Lord's voice, no one else's. Lord, I give you my heart and I'm begging you to give me your heart, your sacred heart. Let us swap, Lord. Take my heart and give me your sacred heart because I want to have your sacred heart in order for my thoughts to be pure, to be in the light, not in the dark, to give life, not to give death. What are you gaining by killing innocent children? 850,000 children disappear every year in America. 850 thousand it's a 350 billion dollar enterprise 350 billion dollars they make out of innocent children because they follow Satan the killer of mankind from the very beginning please you can tell the tree from its fruits if the roots are good or evil. Look at the fruits and you can tell if this tree belongs to God or to Satan. If this man, if this human being belongs to the Lord or to Satan, you can tell from the way they behave, they act, they do things. You can tell who they belong to. 
I beg you, I beg you, give your hearts to the Lord Jesus. Let Him clean that heart for you. Let Him purify that heart for you. Let Him enlighten that heart for you in order for you to see the Lord. No more Satan. Step on Satan. Say, Lord, I surrender. No more clubs, no more pubs, no more gambling, no more alcohol, no more women, no more boys, no more girls, no more living uh, in, in this wide gate. No more, no more, no more. I'm walking through the narrow door, Lord. I want to see you. I don't want Satan anymore. I've tried it my way for so many years. I've had enough. I hate the way I turned out to be. I don't recognize myself anymore. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm a total stranger to myself. I want to come back to you, Lord Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. I give you my body, my spirit, my entire being, Lord Jesus. Clean me right out with your precious blood, which you have shed on Calvary to save me and redeem me. I believe, I trust, and I know there is no other way but you. There is no other life but you. There is no other truth but you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For he is the living Messiah. Have him in your heart. Let him be free in your life. Amen, my beloved. Let us bow our heads and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us all and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and the true blood, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all, pour my Lord the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom, by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus guide you and protect you and deliver you from the snares of the enemy. May the Lord Jesus enlighten your hearts, your minds, your souls, your entire beings in order for that pure thought comes out of our inner person to be seen in the eyes of God as his own children. Amen.